Mike's Daily Podcast. FF episode 1149. Hello, it is Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mont. Today, we hear from the Benita the Rodeo Queen, the disgruntled fiddle player, the brewmaster, and other people with the word duh in front of their name. An article. What a fine article. I. Mike's Daily Podcast. Remember hearing. That sort of Irish being spoken in the movie Circle of Friends with Minnie Driver. Mike's Daily Podcast. What a delicate, fine little 80s love story movie that I wanted to sing about, but then there was something that made me shout, and that was I heard a recording of me in my schmoopy voice when I was married. I don't know how I found this recording. Oh, I think it was a video that I had buried somewhere in my hard drive somewhere. And I saw this video and I was like, Mike's Daily Podcast. That's how I used to talk when no one else was around. It was just me and my wife. You know, you go into that weird Mike's lovey-dovey speech. Daily and I heard my own. Podcast. And I cringed. Yeah. Especially since the marriage has been over a long time. And I kind of cr- It was cringeworthy. So was Paul Simon singing at... I know this is not timely, but I've been meaning to say this, and I just keep throwing it in the back burner of my mind. Paul Simon singing at the Democrat convention was not so good. He sang Bridge Over Trouble Water, and it was... It was sort of... You know, that was actually Art Garfunkel's baby. He sang most of that puppy. Didn't he? I know they, well, it was back when they were together. It feels like it was more of an Art Garfunkel song. Art Garfunkel had more of the soaring vocals. Paul had oh, all right vocals, but he was a songwriter, and he could come out with interesting lyrical twists, which he abundantly proved in the album Graceland years later, and was it Rhythm of the Saints and some other cool albums he did, solo albums. So... I had an interesting experience yesterday at work. Did you ever see the movie Office Space? There's that one character that keeps saying, that, that's my stapler, that's my stapler. Uh, and, and he gets moved down into the basement. Apparently he doesn't get paid anymore. He technically doesn't work for the company. He's not being paid, but he still shows up for work. Oh, look who just walked in. Hi, Mark. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. Hi. And to this cuddle fiddle player, tell you what. What? That sounds like a pathetic story that could never, ever happen. Notice, cuddle fiddle player, it happened, in fact, at my job. There was a guy that I, d- I didn't know his situation working with us. I guess he was like part time and he worked now and then. But the only time I would see him is whenever my company would do like a, a you know, Hey, it's a free lunch for everyone. Show up in the conference room. We got free this. Free, free tacos or whatever. And he walks in. He's still got a key. He walks into the building and he starts talking to me and he's telling me about how he can't get onto his company email. But he's the type of guy that cannot figure out email. Uh, he has he's always forgetting passwords even his own email personal email he can't figure that out oh look who else just walked in hello there mike i make the roof here i'm the brewmaster oh boy brewmaster you don't work here anymore what yes i do i have a key fob that lets me in oh okay i guess you do and i live in the earth beer vat yes but you don't make any root beer anymore so you're fired Oh, can I still live in the root beer bag? Sure, whatever. That was our little bit of, that was our confrontation part of our show, where we had some confrontation between me and one of the characters, the Cafe Anyway characters. That was fun. Yeah. So he is hanging out, and someone notifies me that works at the company that, hey, that guy no longer works for us. And I said, what? And they're like, yeah, we try, we send him emails and stuff, and he doesn't respond, and, and we tried calling him. and not, So it was a total, like, that office space moment. So finally someone did pull him aside and go, hey, you don't work here anymore. And he's like, oh, okay, that frees me up for other things. 
<laughs> even though he, he said that, it frees me up for other things, even though he wasn't doing other things. With us, anyway. He wasn't doing anything. Did I mention how loud the buses are that drive past my house in Podcastro Valley? Not a fan. They're so loud. Even, okay, well, we've got some of the natural gas running. We call it AC Transit here in the Bay Area. It stands for, uh, I think, Air Conditioning Transit. I don't know what it stands for. It's, oh, Alameda County, probably. There we go. Ding, ding, ding. I give myself a sound effect, but I'm too lazy right now. Ow. All I got to do is press these buttons down and find the sound effect. This is good podcasting. And this is it. No. This is... This is it. Mm, donuts. No, but I love that one. This one. There we go. Finally. Okay. Finally, uh... The, yeah, so so we got this one bus, though. It's called the NX-14. NX, it's a Transbay bus. Uh, commuters would use it to go from Podcaster Valley to, to San Francisco. And then, you know, it takes them home. The, the thing about it is that it's a specifically timed bus. There's four that leave in the morning, four that come back in the uh, evening. And it's a loud, it's huge, it's loud, it's not running on the natural gas, it's just ginormous. And when that goes by my, my house, I can't hear or say anything, it's so loud. It's like a plane that's being flown by Jennifer Garner and Matthew Modine. Why do I bring them up on, on every podcast? I don't know, but it's a thing, and I think it's wonderful, and we should keep it going. Because to me, they're the most perfect couple. But they're not a couple. But they were in a movie that was a big uh, Christian movie hit. Okay, that's either here nor there or anywhere, thankfully. But we do have a segment today called Matthew's News we're going to get to in just a moment about something local in the Bay Area. I just want an interesting piece of news. That kind of has to do with the tech world. You, I don't know if you heard yesterday, Twitter, Twitter's doing so bad. Even though, I mean, it's still in the news all the time. Uh, Trump tweets everything, and people are always reporting what the tweets are and saying, oh, Trump tweeted this today. So Twitter's getting all this free advertising constantly. But nobody's using it anymore. None of my friends, when I say I have a Twitter account, they're like, what? Ooh, you actually care? That's like the MySpace of the social media world. And, you know, it was just a few years ago, it was huge. So big that they bought up all this office space in San Francisco, renovated all this area, uh, caused property values to skyrocket in, in the Bay Area. I mean, in San Francisco. They... Maybe they made a fatal move. I'm not a financial anal analyst. I can't even say the word, but you know what I'm saying. I'm not a financial anal. And I don't know that much about money, but I do know that if you relocate to San Francisco in the most priciest real estate in the world, and you've got that high overhead, how are you going to stay in business? Twitter thought they were all that. And a friend of mine works for a startup. They've got an app. And he's in the radio world. It's sort of a radio app. And they... Okay, maybe this podcast can be found on that app. But they pay their employees so much money. And I'm wondering... They have to make, they have to make so much money to do that. Yet they're an app that can be easily thwarted, supplicated, replaced... By anybody else that comes along with a big app. In fact, there are other apps that are uh, comparable to this one. So, I don't know how they're paying, you know, with the high overhead. Anyway, so Twitter's having to sell uh, off office space. And they're, they're trying to, you know, resize themselves to be able to weather the storm. But the, the writing's on the wall. They're going to be ancient history in a couple of years. It's going to be MySpace all over again. I just think that's hilarious. Meanwhile, something big is going on with Google that does not seem to be slowing down at all. I will get to that in a moment, but check out the website, mikesdailypodcast.com. It's, it's better than twitter.com by far. 
Even though Trump doesn't tweet on my website. Dang it. But no, there's the past podcast pictures. Oh, speaking of which. And here's today's podcast picture. The podcast picture is myself over there at the wonderful Hayward Regional Shoreline. I was there actually, this was from Friday, but I was there on yesterday. I was on there on yesterday. That's proper English. And there was uh, such a beautiful sunset and birds and the tide was kind of high. So there was like waves crashing along the jetty. It felt like being on the ocean. I loved, and nobody's there except for a couple people playing Pokemon Go in this one little area. I don't know how they're getting any reception. It's so remote. But they're playing Pokemon Go, trying to get those water Pokemon that we were discussing last podcast. And that was just a fun day yesterday. So there's a picture that I take Basil the Boxer out there. He has a blast. He gets to run around off leash because it's legal to do that there. And I won't get a $300 ticket like I did at Oyster Bay Regional Shoreline. Also part of the East Bay Regional Park District. And they over there, however, suck. Because they trick you into thinking you can have your dog off leash. And then you, as soon as you walk on some asphalt with your dog, you get some asphalt police person who's a total asphalt giving you a ticket. And I don't like that. So check out that picture at mikesdailypodcast.com. Also, if you want to help out the show through the Amazon link, click on that Amazon. Whatever, Whenever you're going to buy anything on Amazon, go through that link first and buy what it was you were going to buy. And that helps us out. We get a little commission from that. There's also the PayPal if you'd like to donate to the show. And you'll get a special greeting from all the Cafe Anyway characters. They will say hi to you and they will make you happy because that's what's important in life. Is to get a special Cafe Anyway greeting from somebody that lives in a root beer vat here at Cafe Anyway in our basement. Who's that, Mike? Are you talking about me? My ears are burning. They are. They're on fire. You should get that looked at. Matthews News. According to MercuryNews.com, Google has told at least two Silicon Valley cities that it is putting plans to provide lightning fast fiber internet service on hold while the company explores a cheaper alternative. Yes, the news comes nearly three months after San Jose officials approved a major construction plan to bring Google Fiber to the city. Silicon Valley. The hub the very ground zero of the tech world mountain view and palo alto also were working with google to get fiber internet service but they said yesterday that the company to, or said that on monday actually that the company told them the project has been delayed it was a surprise said someone from mountain view public works and they also added that Google told city officials the company was still committed to providing fiber service in Mountain View. They just want to give that gratis. I guess they get a big tax break. We didn't expect it because uh, we were working on what was their plan at the time. Google Fiber was, they said, Google Fiber was scheduled to announce its official launch in San Jose within months, but plans seemed to stall after the company obtained final permits in May to begin a three-year construction project. At the time, the company estimated that 60% of its cable network would be underground and 40% would be aerial. Over your head, like probably the show is. Oh, look, here's a picture of a Google Fiber hut. Mmm, I wonder if they sell delicious fiber there. The company was set to begin digging in San Jose last month, but nearly 100 employees hired to install Google Fiber were pulled into an office and told the project was being delayed. They were offered a transfer to San Diego to work on an unrelated project. Uh, and one of the fiber installers said, We were upset, wanted to know what happened. They said that Google was going to reevaluate this whole project because they were thinking of going aerial. Google's parent company, Alphabet, Inc., recently acquired WebPass, Inc., and is expected to adopt its wireless technology, which provides super-fast internet service at lower cost without digging up city streets. WebPass's wireless approach involves sending aerial data between transmitters installed on top of buildings. Wow! 
you know, I was talking all about how great uh, the Comcast hotspots are, the Xfinity hotspots are, but now that I think about it, it's kind of scary that you're you're using someone else's Wi-Fi. It, it could be coming out of someone's house, and they could tap right into your phone and steal all your data. I just got really scared for a second. And then I got all paranoid. And then I got all, they're rigging the election. And then I was all, I'm going to vote for Trump. And then it, someone told me, hey, stupid idiot, the, to rig an, elec- an election as big as an American election, you would need so many boots on the ground. You would have to have, it's not like one hacker can go in and change our whole election. It's not that simple. It's highly complicated. Every state's got different ways of doing it. There's a paper trail for many states. I learned all that on the podcast to the point with Warren Olney. Google Fiber is already up and running in seven other major cities outside of California, but a source familiar with the project says the company is putting additional fiber locations on the back burner to reassess the technology and explore a cheaper alternative, wireless service that does not require expensive, capital-intensive, and time-consuming installation of fiber cables under the ground, which will, you know, after an earthquake, be useless. The source said Google is now focusing more on aerial installation, which cannot be affected as much by earthquakes. Google competitors, including AT&T and Comcast, ding, 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 which I mentioned. (laughs) Ding, ding, ding. Uh, Will uh, continue talks. Uh, Oh, they've been blocking the company. AT&T and Comcast have been blocking Google from... Assessing privately owned utility poles, which could provide a cheaper option that bury cable for pi- fiber. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley. 